Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. I am uh, obviously not in my studio, but I wanted to send out a video uh, anyway because it's been on my mind and I want people to be aware. The, these changes that are coming from the VA are going to be huge and they're going to come quick. Although it's been a while since the VA proposed these changes, be advised that they are going to implement it. It's just a matter of when. I wanted to jump into it with you here now. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel in other ways, consider being a member. You can do that by going to the home page and uh, you'll see the highlighted members there and a join button. All right, so with that, these big changes that are coming um, are coming in waves, right? We've already realized a lot of them and specifically it is policy changes and schedule of rating changes that we're seeing. Uh, the most recent uh, rating change that went into effect was that for the digestive systems and specifically uh, impacting GERD. Uh, really it took GERD into the wrong direction uh, in my opinion and moved it from rating it under the hiatal hernia uh, condition um, rating schedule uh, over to esophageal stricter, making it uh, much more difficult to get a substantial rating, uh, in my opinion, for most veterans. Now, the new proposal, or one of the newest proposals, because there is the uh, bronchiolitis uh, as well that's uh, now in the works of being proposed, uh, so that's good, uh, and that should be a good one, but the one that we have that's currently in the works is that for uh, auditory, respiratory, and mental health. Those three rating schedules are uh, in line to be updated. Now specifically in those uh, three rating schedules there's basically kind of one major point to each one of them although there's going to be more changes and I wanted to talk about what they are, what you need to do to prepare yourself and uh, get ready for that. Uh, so hang on with me as we go through this. We have the auditory, which is the elimination essentially of tinnitus as a standalone condition. And what they're gonna be doing is looking for uh, another disease uh, that they can attribute tinnitus to uh, as a symptom and then rate you on that disease. So maybe it's Meniere's disease, right? Uh, or maybe there's um, a TBI with some tinnitus going on. Now the one kind of caveat to that is if you have a 0% rating for hearing loss, then they're talking about still uh, letting you obtain a 10% a uh, kind of a 10% bump due to tinnitus. If you have hearing loss and tinnitus, they'll give you a 10%. Uh, for the respiratory, we're talking about the major change that they're going to be doing to sleep apnea. Uh, effectively, what they're looking at is if you have um, satisfactory treatment, essentially, with a CPAP, uh, they are going to rate you at 0%. Currently, on the current rating schedule, we're looking at a 50% rating. Now, remember that this 50% rating that's currently in effect for sleep apnea, if you have sleep apnea, you can absolutely get to 50% uh, with a CPAP uh, prescribed and used by you. Now, remember, a 50% rating doesn't matter if it's a service-connected direct condition or a secondary condition. So if your sleep apnea is due to another service-connected condition for whatever it is, uh, that's still a huge, a huge rating and a huge opportunity for you to take advantage of. So we have the sleep apnea uh, change that's coming and then we have mental health. Mental health is going to move uh, from basically one big bucket of symptoms uh, with a limitation to the 100% rating currently of if you if you are employed it's a little harder for you to get uh, in fact the VA's verbiage is essentially you should not be 100% if you're working with uh, for mental health so 
what they're doing is, is they're going to be eliminating the total occupational and social uh, uh, impairment aspects of the 100%, which is good. It's opening it up uh, to be able to reach the 100% and still be able to hold a job. Now, when we're looking at that, instead of having one big bucket of symptoms to work with, now the VA is opening it up to five domains. Those five domains are different aspects of your life, right? cognitive and, and self-care and so forth. So it's essentially you have a few different avenues in which to effectively obtain a 100% rating. So uh, you're going to need to do your homework and you're going to need to have those conversations with your mental health provider and make sure that they're documenting your severity. The VA is going to be looking for uh, how severe your symptoms are in each one of the five domains. Now, from my understanding, and I'm going off my memory now, it's if you have one domain that is rated at the highest level of impairment, you're, you can get 100%. If you don't have any that are at the highest level of impairment, which is a four, they're going a zero through four scale. If you do not have any at the four level, but you have two, three, level domains, uh, then they will also warrant uh, a 100% rating. So it's going to be important as we move into this. Now, for some things, I believe that these rating ch schedule changes are going to be good. For example, I, th I believe that, um, that I think we're going to have a little more latitude in the mental health rating schedule. Obviously, I think that uh, the, the rating schedule for um, uh, respiratory is, is not good. Uh, and even auditory, I'm not happy with the elimination of the uh, uh, tinnitus as a standalone condition. What can you do? Well, they've kicked it down the road. This is going to happen. It, it will. There will be rating changes to these schedules. Uh, it's just a matter of when. Uh, originally, they had a, we'll call it a suspense date or a, uh, a final date is what they called it. I believe it was in June of 2024. Now they've kicked it to April of 2025. So it's just a placeholder date, but it is showing that the VA is actively paying attention and they probably want to get past the uh, the, the election time frame before they uh, push, push on with this. So April is the target date. Could happen sooner, could happen later, could happen in April. The biggest thing for you to do is prepare um, and if you are already rated for these types of things, tinnitus, sleep apnea, mental health, all of those things, anything that's uh, COPDs changing, there's other things too. But if you're rated for any of those, you're gonna be grandfathered in through the rating schedule change. So you, your ratings will not be impacted if you're already rated. Now, if this opens up the doorway to you being able to obtain a higher rating, then you are going to need to take it upon yourself to file for an increase. If you have not filed for tinnitus, do so now. If you have not filed for uh, sleep apnea, probably do that now. Uh, if you haven't filed for mental health, my suggestion is do it now. If it gets awarded before the rating schedule change, fine. Then go in and file for an increase after the fact if you think you can get more based on the, the new rating schedule change. Uh, if you ride the time frame between the two rating schedules, the current and the new, uh, then what's going to happen is, is the VA is supposed to uh, look at both rating schedules uh, based on all of your evidence and then rule uh, or have a ruling that uh, for you that's the, the better of the two. So in other words, if you filed a claim today, let's say you filed an intent to file today, you got your intent to file in, that buys you 12 months timeline and preserves today's effective date for you and the rating schedule associated with today. Now let's say that um, come April, uh, the VA implements the new rating schedule change for sleep apnea and it's in effect. Now you're filing your sleep apnea claim, but your effective date is prior using the old in this scenario rating schedule data, which or rating schedule uh, criteria, which gives you the ability to get that 50% rating if you are prescribed a CPAP. So 
what the VA is going to do is they're going to push through. You're going to file all your evidence. They're going to look at it. And then you're going to go to your CMP exam. And the VA rater is going to get all that information in. And what they are supposed to do, do they always get it right? No. That's why you need to know what's going on so you can fix it if they screw it up. What they're supposed to do is look at the old rating schedule and the new rating schedule because you went over both of them so you went in both sides so you get the benefit of utilizing both rating schedules once the VA looks at both of those they're supposed to rule in your favor with the better of the criteria in this case if you're prescribed a CPAP they should go with the older rating schedule and uh, uh, award you a 50% rating uh, if for some reason they do not, then you're going to need to file a higher level review. Check the box on there that says that you want an informal conference. In that informal conference, you're going to want to point out that you had an intent to file in that was prior to the rating schedule change and that you want to be rated against that schedule. With that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.